Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to discuss the Halo Infinite microtransactions and talk about how it could be problematic. I will say though, off the bat, this is not the worst microtransaction kind of structure that I've seen. There's one specific part to talk about in my opinion. And, and I also want to say is I'm not a Halo player. I've never played a Halo before. I've seen it. Wasn't my cup of tea. Jumped into Halo Infinite. Absolutely loving the game. It's an incredible PvP experience. I played the beta before. I'm playing it now. It's just a really, really good game. And I'm so happy that I decided to jump into it now. I don't know whether I'll be making content, maybe streaming here or there with Halo, but I am loving this game. However, I do talk about micro transactions in most games. Now, I, for those who don't know, I'm a Destiny player, so you can imagine micro transactions on that level being problematic. And I think Halo is around about that as well. But let's get into what I'm talking about. First and foremost, we go to the shop. Now, we have a battle pass available. It costs you 1,000 of in game credits, which is about, I think, about £8, which is about. 10 11 dollars and then we have things that you could buy on a daily basis down here in this bottom corner and i think these are weekly bundles at the top <clears throat> now the armor sets that arrive to be honest worth the money you know it's not too dissimilar to uh, like a, a set of ornaments for destiny and they they look pretty cool the ones that are available now you know you get all these head attachments head visors you know visors you get all the armor completely all the little attachments and the armor skin itself so for 2000 which is 16 pound about 20 ish dollars you know that that to me is worth the purchase if you really want to buy something however i will say that i feel that other than the helmet itself right here the like body attachments to the armor don't really change enough to look unique. So I don't feel like certain parts of the armors are worth the money that they're putting out in terms of buying. However, I will say, you know, you obviously look very unique with this helmet visor. And I think that's where most of the customization to look unique is going to come from is the visors, the helmets, etc. So not too shabby for a 2000 purchase. Now, over here, we look at this helmet, and as I just said, the helmets and visors are, are going to look unique. However, I don't feel like this is worth it. So you see, you get the helmet, you get an attachment, you get a coating, and you get the visor for half the price of a full armor set. Now, I think that's a little bit overpriced. If you took this down to about 800 in-game credits, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense, you know. But to have it exactly 50% of a full armor bundle, to me, just doesn't add up. You know, I feel like... It's a, it's a little bit scammy. Now, I know you're going to say, you don't have to buy it if you don't want to. That's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm probably never going to buy anything from this game. However, I can have an objective opinion about microtransactions in general. It's a big part of the gaming culture. And sometimes it needs to be looked at and spoken about. So that's what I'm doing right here. Not for me, for my channel, etc, etc. Now, some of the things over here on the side are pretty cool. Like the vehicles, if you're into vehicles, I, I'd assume, you know, having a different colored vehicle or a different, you know, coating for your vehicles going to be worth it to you for me i don't really use vehicles i don't really like vehicles in games so it's not going to be anything to me so i'm not really going to speak about how much it's going to cost because i have no reference down here we have a chibi blue team bundle now this in my opinion is worth it it's 500 in-game credits which is um blah, 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 blah. let me have a look let me have a look so four pound which is probably about six seven dollars i don't think this is i think this is pretty cool you get emblems you get backgrounds you get stickers to put on your guns you know, and there's a lot of them. So I feel like something like this, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, is definitely worth it for the cheap price that it is. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now we start to get on a little bit of the, oh my God, what are they doing type situation. The boost and swap packs. Now you could buy a few of these and get, you know, every time you buy one, you get two times XP boost and two challenge swaps. So this is where it all falls apart for me, and that's the battle pass and how you progress it. Now, two XP boosts, all that means is, is when you complete a challenge, it will be worth twice the amount of XP. However, challenges are a little bit finicky, in my opinion, a little bit off, a little bit like chance RNG. So, you know, while, like I said, while it's not the worst structured battle pass monetary system I've seen... I feel like it's a it's a little bit scammers when it comes to the battle pass. And then we have challenge swaps, which allows you to challenge challenge swap. And I'll get into that in a second. Um, I will say though that if they were to do this way, and then it does it does make the longevity of a battle pass, you know, 
more it, it makes the battle pass last and i think that's a positive but i feel like if you want all these unlocks and you want to be able to like actually really invest in your character customization the battle pass really doesn't do it very well in my opinion each level so far has been about a thousand xp i would assume that the further you get into the battle pass the more xp it's going to take you to level up if it stays at a thousand xp every single level I would be okay with that. I'd say it's not that much of a scum ours, but it, it kind of still is a little bit. So let's talk about challenges. <clears throat> this for me is the problem. As you can see right now, I have some of these challenges. I can't change these challenges whatsoever unless I have those challenge swaps. Now, I think you get challenge swaps from leveling up the battle pass or buying them. So you have to buy them to change one specific challenge. And that to me is a a little bit of a scam in itself so a lot of these challenges that i have here are very kind of rng based capture enemy flags in pvp you can do this it's not impossible but if you're a solo player just playing you know you're going to pick up the flag you're going to get instantly dunked on by the enemy team because you don't have communications you don't have teammates that you're playing with so getting a flag back all the way to the spawn your spawn is a is a little bit difficult if you're in a team with like five people that you play with regularly, you know, you can all kind of like defend each other, get a vehicle in the mix to kind of protect the flag carrier. So this is actually quite difficult for a solo player. So I'm not going to get, I'm not going to see that 250 XP, I don't think. I might get lucky where a teammate who brings back the flag dies right on the point and I can just nick it and, and throw it in to get my, my capture. Like I think I did with this one out of three. But I feel like it's very situational, very RNG based. Grapple and hijack an enemy vehicle in PvP. This also is very situational based. When are you going to have the grapple hook available? Is an enemy going to drive past you on a vehicle at that specific time before you die and lose your grapple hook? Are you going to be able to actually grapple onto them as they're flying past you? This is a very luck based challenge i have tried this so many times and i think unless you're really sitting and waiting and hiding in a tree to do this this is you know it's just hit or miss or whether you're going to do this kill multiple enemy spartans after detecting them with a single threat sensor this could be done in um big team battle quite easily you know it's one kill so th this one it, but it, again it's situational based when you get your threat sensor and you fire it and you highlight someone and you start to shoot them they could beat you in that 1v1 fight just, just off the bat. But most of the time in these areas where you meet a person, there's two or three enemies backing them up, specifically in big team battle. So are you going to be able to actually kill the person you've highlighted before like you get triple teamed? Again, can be done. Gives you 250 XP. Not terrible, but, you know, it is. Kill an enemy Spartan with an energy sword. This one's pretty easy if you can just get an energy sword, you know. So, you know, not all the challenges are ridiculously RNG luck based. However, I do feel like unless you have those double XPs, unless you have those challenge swaps, you can't really progress through the battle pass as consistently as you probably would like to. Now we look at the daily challenge and this seems to be just play any PvP matches. When you first start this, it's one win and one win gives you 100 XP, which is great. Then it goes up to two wins. So you do two wins, you get another 100 XP. Then it goes to three wins and you get another 100 XP. So for you to get 300 XP, you need to play six games, which isn't dramatic when it comes to Halo. Some of the games are fast, some of the games are long, but it's an enjoyable PvP experience regardless. So I'm okay with that. The problem then comes with practice makes perfect when it goes to four wins you have to do four wins to get 150 xp and it stays at that so every time you do four matches it resets back to doing four matches i think it will reset back to one match on the daily refresh so again not the worst structure when it comes to battle pass monetary um kind of systems however i do just feel like they probably could have just made it a little bit easy to progress your your battle pass even if you know like they had just done Every game when you play, if you win the game, you get like 20 XP. If you lose the game, I don't know, you get 5 XP or just no XP. But, you know, just have little increments of XP just from playing the game here and there. Maybe like doing some sort of, you know, getting like three kills in a row, like gives you like 2 XP or something. Just something to gradually build up your XP on the battle pass instead of having to do specific challenges which are based around luck. And like I said, the problem exists if as you get through the battle pass, it takes more XP to level up like because that, that's just going to make it a very 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 long progression when it comes to this game and we don't know how long the seasons are right now so we don't know how long this battle pass is going to stay around so if you really really want to get everything done and make sure you've got it done you're going to have to buy battle pass tiers um if in, if customization and stuff is massively important to you so you know towards the end of the battle pass you know typically there's just just better things to get so you know you, you this this starts to make you look 
quite unique but not dramatically unique i still don't feel like having these little bullets on your arm is anything really noticeable other than to yourself like when you're fighting in a game the only thing that you really see on the enemy is their their coating their color what they look like in terms of their, like their skin so you see this one here for level 34 doesn't look that great like it's just a, a kind of olive green type coating with blue shoulder pads like that to me just doesn't feel like it's worth it now as we go through you can see like you get these types of things when you die you get this like animation that's pretty cool that that's worth unlocking that's worth getting you know but like here for instance the knee pad doesn't doesn't look crazy like it doesn't look like it's some sort of over the top unlock worthy of you busting your ass to get when you get to the end though like let's go all the way to the end you get stuff like this where you're on fire this to me is pretty fucking dope like this is the first one as well that I saw that looks really unique. Like, this to me looks really, really unique. And that would be worth busting your ass for. However, I think everything else on the battle pass between, like, I don't know, up to about probably... Probably about here, level 90. It just doesn't, just doesn't seem worth it. It doesn't seem worth busting your ass for. That's just my opinion anyway. You know, some people are really going to love specific things about specific armors. And like I said, I'm not a Halo player and stuff. Um... But I don't know. I don't know. What do you think about the microtransactions? I, I, like I said, I don't think it's the worst. I think Destiny 2 is worse. I think, you know, obviously any fucking EA game in existence is way worse. Um, do you think this is worth the time put in to be able to unlock these things? Or do you feel like they could just add a few extra things in to make it a little bit easier to progress? Um, but I, I really do think... The battle pass is the real only problem. But if you love the game and you're playing it a lot, I feel like it, you're not really going to care that much. Um, however, yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about is the microtransactions of the game. I am absolutely loving the game. I think it's an incredible experience. And I'm so happy I jumped into Halo Infinite to, to actually play it. I'm probably going to try and stream it sometime soon. Um, so let me know what you think about microtransactions in this game down below. Thank you for watching. I've been easy now. You guys have been awesome.